Okay, welcome to this short tutorial or primer on how to do some basic rigging in Maya. I'm going to be covering joint creation, set them up with some basic IK and some helpers uh, to get you going. Okay, so in this particular example, I've hidden uh, my status line, oh no, sorry, my um, command line, help line, uh, and <clears throat> animation bar and time slider, uh, range slider down the bottom here. Uh, you can bring them back by hitting display. Uh, sorry, UI elements show all UI elements. And of course, I can get rid of some of those because I don't want them. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and hide ones I'm not interested in. Uh, the stages range slider, time slider, the command line, help line, just to give me some more real estate for the purposes of this tutorial. Okay, so what you have to do is make sure you are in the animation menu. So make sure you go through to the animation uh, option. And the top menus here will change depending on what mode you're in. Okay, but we're going to actually go and make sure we're in the animation tab here. In our shelf, so we have access to our tools. The one we're interested in is our joint tool here. Okay, so first and foremost I'm going to switch to my front view for the creation process. Do that by hitting panels and going to my author graphics and choosing front view. I can also hold down spacebar and select front view by left clicking for it. Okay. So here's my grid. I'm going to then select my joint tool and I'll create my first joint up here, my second joint over here, and my third joint here just below the first joint. This is representing an arm. And to complete this operation, I'm going to hit enter on the keyboard and I'll have my joint as so. So I'm going to go back to the perspective view to examine my joint here. Now, one thing to notice is my selection gizmo here, which is what you can see here, is set in its local orientation. So it represents the orientation of the joint. It's a good chance you probably set on world orientation. Hold down Control and Shift and right click, you can switch to your world uh, orientation, which would display it as it's positioned in the world. Same goes for the uh, rotation orientation here. If you Control Shift and right click, you can change it to local as well. And you can see how the orientation handle changes back to that position. This is important to realize that when you're working with joints, you should work in the object itself so you can actually see the orientation of the joint. You don't want to see the world orientation of it. It makes it easier for you to adjust the position of these joints. And while we're discussing position, I'm just going to switch on my uh, channel box over here to have a look at some of the attributes. And at the moment, the first joint is containing translation and rotations, but it's important to note the rotations are all zeroed out on each one of the joints. When you want to move joints in a system, you really should only move and rotate the parent joint, which is the first one. But all subsequent joints, it's a big no-no to move it. You should always rotate the preceding joint or the parent joint to position your child joint. It sort of mimics what the body can do. So for instance, if you're building an arm, your elbow cannot move like this. You'd effectively be breaking it. In fact, your arm will rotate from the, the joint, which is the root joint, which would be the shoulder, and that would therefore move your elbow. Okay. So you really should rotate joints and not translate them. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and name these while I'm at it as good practice. So I'm going to call this shoulder. I'll call this elbow. And I'll just call this one wrist. And also good practice is to stick these in layers. So I'm going to straight up put this in a layer. I'm going to call the skeleton. Okay, so here we have a joint. Now, normally to animate this joint, you would be rotating it to affect a pose. This is called forward kinematics, or FK. It's a term, knowledge, term used in animation quite a lot. The other terminology they use a lot of is inverse kinematics. We're going to create an IK handle next. 
But just to explain what forward kinematics means, it means you animate the parent joint and then you move down the chain in a forward manner to animate the next joint and so on and so forth. So let's look at and examine inverse kinematics. So we're going to have a look at the IK tool here. And what we do is we just select it and the selection process or creation process works with selecting the first joint here in the bone chain. And an IK handle always has two or more bones. So what we're going to do is go down to where the wrist is, not the elbow, and select the next joint. And from here we can actually select the joint and we are affecting inverse kinematics. This is because the calculations recur in reverse. So it goes up the chain. Uh, as opposed to down the chain, which is forward kinematics. Okay, so we've created our IK handle here. So I'm just going to change this to arm um, IK for a name. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a helper controller uh, for us to work or basically to uh, separate our joints from our, our supporting rig to a controlling system which we can easily key and set up. So the best things to use for uh, helpers is curves. So I'm going to go to the curves tab here and I'm going to select the circle and I'll just go ahead and create a circle like so on the grid and I'm going to snap it into position on my joint here. So I'm going to switch on the snaps. The one I'm interested in is my point snap here. Switch it on and I should be able to snap it down very quickly. Now I'm going to switch off my snap. So I have a effective helper just here. I'm going to scale it up a bit so it's easier to see. Now here on the right hand side you can see my channel box and all the values on it. Now helpers should be set up such that you can zero them all out. So to do that what we should do is go over to modify and do what's called freeze transforms. And if you go back over and look at your channel box you will notice that they're all zeroed out here. This is important because if you're animating an object into various positions like so you can easily return back to the source position by hitting or entering in the zero values back into here. Okay, at the moment this helper doesn't do anything, it's just sitting here. So we're going to link it up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my helper first. Then I'm going to select my IK handle second, which is Control Shift and select it. And then I'm interested in doing what's called a constraint. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to my animation menu again. And I'm interested in these constraints over here. Now what I'm interested in looking at is what's called the point constraint, which is this one here. Oh no, I think it's this one here. So let's have a look and see if it is the point constraint. No, it's aim constraint. Sorry, that would be this one, the point constraint. And if you have your circle selected first and your IK handle selected second, you can go ahead and hit your point constraint. And everything is done correctly. You'll see here the arm IK channel here now has been blued out. The translate channels are being controlled directly by this object here. So if you've effectively created your first helper for controlling this IK arm, I should give that a name. It's called arm control. And we showed that to a layer called controllers. And we can actually add our IK handle here to its own layer. MISC rig setup. And with it in all different layers, we can effectively hide things. We 